Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on Y5. This video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Y57. Okay, Y57 is also known as IEEE 802.11 BE standard. Okay, one of the interesting Y57 feature is Y57 actually support extremely high throughput. Okay, which means that Wi Fi 7 can deliver high data rate, which has huge speed and also very low latency. So that's why every one of us is so excited for Wi Fi 7 to come on board. This video, I'm going to explain what are the key new Wi Fi 7 technology in order to make this extremely high throughput possible. This will be the part three series discussion on Wi Fi. So, guys, if you're keen to know more about Wi-Fi, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on Wi-Fi. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. When more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me. Help me by smash the like button. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Or maybe later on when you learn something from this video, again, remember, subscribe to this channel. Guys, also give me some comment okay, so that I know exactly how to improve the quality of this channel. So guys, for example, you can also give me some comment like what are the topics that you guys are keen? Last but not least, please remember to turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, let's start okay, by discuss a very brief history of Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm not going to the dinosaur era, okay, which means that Wi-Fi one. Okay, I like to start at Wi-Fi 4. Okay, those very early era, okay, I will skip for the time being. Okay, let's start a quick discussion on Wi-Fi 4. Okay, Wi-Fi 4 is also known as IEEE 802.11 N standard. Okay, so at Wi-Fi 7, there are actually two frequency bands. Okay, either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. You can see that Wi-Fi 7 also has a reasonable good channel bandwidth with 20 megahertz and also 40 megahertz. Wi-Fi 4 actually has this 64 QAM. The motivation for Wi-Fi 4 to move to Wi-Fi 5 is because they actually want to increase the throughput or they demand for more data rate. And therefore, Wi-Fi 4 actually move on to Wi-Fi 5. Okay, how to have high data rate? Okay, so this Wi-Fi 5 is also known as IEEE 802.11 AC standard. So in order to so-called support higher data rate, Wi-Fi 5 basically concentrate on 5 gigahertz. Okay, because the higher the frequency, actually you will have more data rate. So hence for Wi-Fi 5, mainly they are going to concentrate on higher data rate and therefore for Wi-Fi 5, they remain at 5 gigahertz. How can they actually increase the throughput? It's basically by the channel bandwidth. You can see that Wi-Fi 5 basically increase the channel bandwidth. For Wi-Fi 4, the maximum channel bandwidth is only 40 megahertz. But for Wi-Fi 5, you can see that the channel bandwidth increased to 60, or oh sorry, 80 megahertz and also 160 megahertz. You can see that the amount of channel bandwidth that actually increased. In short, when you actually increase the bandwidth, you can actually send more data, which means that better throughput and high data rate. Another key improvement on Wi-Fi 5 is basically it support a higher level of QAM, 256 QAM. Next, why Wi-Fi 5 move to Wi-Fi 6? Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, on the first series of discussion, I have mentioned that Wi-Fi 5 has been able to serve us well until the network become congested. 
when the network become congested, Wi-Fi 5 will not be able to serve us that well anymore. So therefore, okay, Wi-Fi 5 need to move on to Wi-Fi 6 is because they need to resolve the network congestion. How they resolve the so-called network congestion is basically for Wi-Fi 6, they actually make use of LTE feature. Okay, I'm not sure whether you still remember the OFDMA. Okay, basically, OFDMA is able to so-called uh, resolve the issue of the network congestion. Okay, so therefore, this is why we need to have this Wi-Fi 6. Mainly is to have this LTE standard, the OFDMA, in order to resolve the network congestion issue. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 actually is also known as IEEE 802.11 AX standard. For Wi-Fi 6, you can either choose either at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. But for Wi-Fi 6E, okay, basically for 6E, they introduce another frequency band, which we call sub-6 or 6 gigahertz. Basically, the motivation okay, to move to this so-called new frequency band is because you can have amazing bandwidth. Okay, we, again, you can look at the video at the part 2 series discussion. I have mentioned that why Wi-Fi 6E need to move to 6 gigahertz. Next, you can take a look on the channel bandwidth. You can see that for Wi-Fi 6, they are almost the same as Wi-Fi 5. Remember, I told you that the motivation for Wi-Fi 5 to move to Wi-Fi 6 is not really improve the data rate. Mainly is to resolve the so-called network congestion. Okay, basically for Wi-Fi 5, once the network become congested, then this Wi-Fi 5 will not be able to serve us that well anymore. But for Wi-Fi 6, it mainly used to resolve the issue of network congestion. So hence, you can see that for the channel bandwidth, okay, they doesn't really increase. To be very frank, this is because for 5 megahertz, okay, basically the so-called a lot of so-called neighboring actually transmit. So hence, for this channel bandwidth, they are not able to increase anymore. And for Wi-Fi 6, basically, it also support a higher QAM, 1024 QAM. So next, why we need to move from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7? Okay, so the key idea is, again, how to improve the data rate or how to increase okay, the throughput. Okay, so therefore, we have this Wi-Fi 7. Okay, Wi-Fi 7 is also known as IEEE 802.11. BE standard. Okay, for Wi-Fi 7, okay, basically you can transmit the signal at the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz or, or sorry, for Wi-Fi 7, you can actually transmit at 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. Okay, which means that you can simultaneously transmit okay, your data at this frequency band, okay, which is 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz. But for Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 6E, you can either choose to transmit at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz. But for Wi-Fi 7, you can actually transmit at 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. Again, you can see that, as I mentioned earlier on, the motivation to move Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7, again, is to increase the throughput. So therefore, you can see that the channel bandwidth also increased to maximum. 320 megahertz. Last but not least, for Wi-Fi 7, another key improvement will be 4096 QAM. Okay, so basically over here, you have some idea on the brief history of Wi-Fi, why they need to move from one era to another era. Okay, due to the recent surge in people working from home, okay, so basically COVID is not that so-called long time ago, so it's just a few years ago, we have this situation that we have COVID, which forced us all so-called, either we have a home-based learning or work from home. So basically, because of this recent search that people actually work from home, okay, this highlight the importance of Wi-Fi connectivity. Not only does it provide data and connection to office network, but it is also increasing utilized for video conferencing to connect remote workers and facilitate online meeting, serving as substitute for face-to-face -face interaction and large conference. Okay, so in short, okay, because of COVID, okay, that 
period of time, we are forced to work from home. And because once we work from home, there is almost not possible okay, to have this face-to-face -face meeting. So therefore, okay, it actually replaced by maybe Zoom and then uh, some other form of uh, so-called online meeting. And therefore, this highlights the importance of Wi-Fi. Okay, the use of video traffic is expected to continue to rise in the coming years, especially as applications such as VRAR, okay, they become more widespread. Okay, WLAN, okay, which is called the White Local Area Network. Okay, user will also anticipate a reliable, near real-time gaming and cloud computing service. Okay, so in short, okay, because of the so-called, we, we are going to expect this AR, VR is going to be our part of our life. And then we also have this so-called 8K video, etc. And we are also need to have this real-time game. Okay, so basically, the latency for gaming also need to be drastically reduced. And we are going to send more and more data to the cloud. And basically, with all this, make this Wi-Fi 7 very crucial. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 has been launched, okay, but Wi-Fi 7 is already on the horizon okay, as the next generation of Wi-Fi. Okay, we are going to take a close look on these six key new Wi-Fi 7 technology. Okay, first will be more data density, which means that how can we actually increase the data rate? Second, okay, we are going to see the so-called channel width. Okay, basically, we widen the channel width to 320 megahertz. Okay, again, I'm going to explain okay, how by widening the channel width can also increase the data rate. Next will be MLO, which is the multiple link operation. MUMIMO, multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. In short, they have 16 antennas to support this MUMIMO. Last but not least, okay, on the next few slides, I'm going to explain the multiple RU and also the multiple AP operation. Okay, let's quickly understand okay, how by increasing the QAM can actually increase the data rate. Okay, Wi-Fi 7 actually increased the data capacity encoded onto a radio signal okay, measured by a standard known as quadratic amplitude modulation, QAM. Okay, so basically for Wi-Fi 7, okay, actually they have this 4096 QAM. In short, okay, basically the more QAM, which means that you are able to send more data at one go. Okay, while Wi-Fi 6 had a QAM limit of 1024, Wi-Fi 7 boasts an impressive 4096, okay, which is also known as 4K QAM, significantly boasting peak rates and enhanced throughput. Okay, with each symbol now capable of carrying 12 bits instead of 10. Okay, so for Wi-Fi 6, they can only carry 10 bits per symbol. But for Wi-Fi 7, we can support up to 12 bits per symbol. Okay, so this theoretically transmit rate actually increased by 20%. So the first thing how we can actually increase the high data rate is to increase the number of level of QAM. So from here, you can see that for Wi-Fi 6 is 1024. So basically, when we actually increase to 4096 QAM, we can see that basically the data rate can be increased by 20%. Okay, so this is the first reason how we can have more data density okay, by increase the level of QAM actually increase the throughput. Next, okay, on the greater channel width, okay, which Wi-Fi band actually operate in smaller band? Okay, so basically either 20, 40, 80, or 160 megahertz, okay, for connecting to individual device. So basically these are all from Wi-Fi 6. Okay, basically the maximum so-called channel width will be 160 megahertz. Wi-Fi 7 actually double the bandwidth to 320 megahertz. Okay, this effectively double the Wi-Fi speaks to individual device and add a lot of more bandwidth to support additional device. In short, okay, what Wi-Fi 7 actually offer is actually a larger channel bandwidth. When you actually has a larger so-called channel bandwidth, you can increase the throughput, which I will explain later on. Besides increasing the throughput, we can also serve more user because the channel bandwidth is larger. Okay, let's take a look on this. 
Okay, just imagine these are all expressway. So at 80 megahertz, you can see that 80 megahertz is over here. So for 80 megahertz, you have one lane. Okay, when you actually use 160 megahertz, you can imagine that let's let's say we compare against 80 megahertz for 160 megahertz, we are going to have two lane, correct? So basically you can see that we are going to have two lane. And again, if let's say we move to 320 megahertz, so over here you can count that well, I am going to have one lane, two lane, three lane, and four lane. Correct. So basically for 320 megahertz, I'm going to have four lane. Okay, imagine this. Okay, I think it's a clear cut so-called understanding. Okay, when you only have one lane, okay, the the network is going to be very congested. Okay, basically, if anything so-called mess up, okay, then the network will be congested. So when we actually increase the channel bandwidth to 160 megahertz, you can again just imagine that the lane become two. So once the lane become two, you can imagine that the traffic definitely will be smoother as compared to 80 megahertz. And again, at 320 megahertz, I basically increase the number of lane to four. And when this actually increase, okay, again, you can imagine that by increasing the channel bandwidth, you can imagine that the traffic will be much, much faster. Also, okay, imagine this, okay, when you actually has a wider channel bandwidth, you just imagine when you drive, okay, you actually tends to be able to drive faster rather than so-called single lane. Then you will be driving slow and ensure that you will not hit on the two side. But once you, if you have a larger channel bandwidth, the tendency for you to speed up is definitely there. And also, you can see from here, I actually can have four lanes to serve four different so-called car that actually travel at the respective lane. Okay, so basically this is reason number two. Okay, by having a higher channel bandwidth, it actually can increase the speed and also increase the number of users. Next, okay, what is actually MLO, which is called the multiple link operation? Okay, currently router can support multiple Wi-Fi band, 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. But Wi-Fi client connect using one of the Wi-Fi band. Okay, so basically, when the router actually connect to the Wi-Fi client, okay, can be PC, can be mobile phone, okay, they can actually support multiple Wi-Fi band, 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. Okay, with Wi-Fi 7, router will be able to connect across three different bands to a client device. In short, for Wi-Fi 6E, you can see that, okay, for example, the router want to connect to this mobile phone, it can be connected either 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, or 6 gigahertz, which means that only one of the frequency band will be utilized. So basically, this is the feature for Wi-Fi 6. But for Wi-Fi 7, you can see that, okay, basically, if let's say my mobile phone send a message to the Wi-Fi router, okay, which is Wi-Fi 7, then you can send simultaneously. Okay, imagine this, they can so-called split the data into three. And then basically they can send the data with this three frequency, 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. So again, with this, you can imagine how the throughput can be so-called increased or improved. Okay, simply, I can send the data by the three frequency band. But for Wi-Fi 6, basically, I can either choose either 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz, either one of them. But for Wi-Fi 7, you can see that they can simultaneously transmit at this three frequency. And from here, you can imagine how the throughput actually increase. Okay, so imagine here, so imagine three highway leading to your destination. Okay, MLO is similar to giving this highway the flexibility to either spread the traffic across router or to quickly move traffic from one highway to another if one get congested, okay, so which means that, let's say uh, 2.4 get congested, okay, so basically they can concentrate to send the data at 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz. So basically this is the reason number three by having multiple link operation, which means that for Wi-Fi 7, okay, instead of either 2.4, 5 or 6, basically Wi-Fi 7 support simultaneously transmit data at 2.4 and 5 and 6 gigahertz. So this is reason number 3. Okay, reason number 4 is on MU, okay, which is multiple user, multiple input, multiple output with 16 antenna. As you can see that this is actually a 16 by 16 
MIMO, okay, which means that I'm going to have 16 antenna. Okay, MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, refer to the utilize of multiple transmitting and receiving antenna to enable continuous transmission and reception of signal between transmitter and receiver. In short, let me make it easy for you to understand. Okay, if I'm going to have 16 antenna, and imagine all these 16 antenna can receive 16 different source of transmission. After that, the MIMO actually will combine the data. Okay, so basically the MIMO will combine the 16 so-called antenna data into one source. So basically with this, you can imagine that the throughput also increase. Rather than one antenna receiving from the transmitter, I actually have 16 antenna receiving different message okay, at one time. Okay, so basically with this, you can imagine that the throughput definitely will be improved. Okay, so this technology optimizes the resource by doubling the system channel capacity okay, without require additional bandwidth resource or antenna transmission power. Okay, it is considered the core technology of next generation mobile communication. Okay, so in short, okay, once if you demand for more data rate, you want more throughput, okay, what one of the key things that we can do is to increase the MIMO, MIMO in short. So currently for Wi-Fi 7, they has this 16 by 16 MIMO. Okay, by having 16 antenna, okay, the throughput will be amazing. Okay, for end device such as laptop or smartphone, okay, those that support Wi-Fi typically have at least one antenna. Okay, in a old era, okay, maybe you can imagine that for smartphone, typically smartphone, you have at least two antenna. But in short, okay, basically for, let's say we move to the very older generation of laptop and also the not so smartphone at that time, basically you need to have at least one antenna. Okay, antenna is to allow you to transmit or receive. Without antenna, you can't basically transmit or receive. Okay, the device equipped with multiple antenna are capable of supporting my mode. Okay, which means that if you have more than one antenna, okay, which means that you are actually supporting MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. If a router has two antenna to support five gigahertz of Wi-Fi, it is generally said to support two by two MIMO. Similar router with three antenna support three by three MIMO. Those with four antenna support four by four MIMO and so on. Okay, but for Wi-Fi 7, basically the router can support up to 16 by 16 MIMO. Okay, so this is reason number four. Okay, we are going to have multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. In short, we are going to have 16 antenna receiving 16 different source of transmission. And then after that, they actually combine the information. Okay, so again, with this, you can imagine okay, how fast okay, this Wi-Fi 7 can be. Okay, reason number five. Okay, basically, before I continue on the reason number five, again, if you find this video helpful, okay, please consider to like and also subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Let's go to the reason number five, okay, which is called the multiple RU, okay, which is called the punching. Okay, what is actually punching here? A key limitation of Wi-Fi is that any interference affect the entire channel. Okay, so basically, for example, this is the channel that you are going to operate. Let's say if you are going to have some form of interfere, Okay, basically, all the rest of this channel will be unusable. Okay, so basically, you can see that for Y57, they have this multiple RU punching. Okay, so the key thing is with this kind of feature, okay, you can actually reuse this. Okay, so basically, once you are able to reuse this, you can see that basically this is with RU, multiple RU punching, and basically, you can reuse this so called bandwidth. Okay, if without this multiple RU punching, then this so-called bandwidth is actually become a waste because just having an interference over here, the rest of the bandwidth will not be able to utilize. So basically, this is all the feature from Wi-Fi 6, okay, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, etc. So basically, these are all features that is without so-called the multiple RU punching. Okay, for our Wi-Fi 7, we have this so-called multiple RU punching. So therefore, once we have interference, only the interference so-called bandwidth will be affected. The rest will be still intact. So basically, this is what it's going to say here. Okay, so basically, however we're punching, if a portion of a channel is impacted by interference, only that portion can be blocked 
while the rest of the channel continue to be used for data transfer. Okay, so basically this is what I have mentioned just now. Okay, this makes Wi-Fi more resilient to interference and ensure that critical flow and latency are not affected. Okay, to illustrate, imagine a highway with Wi-Fi 6. Let's say on a highway there is a pothole in one of the lanes. Okay, basically it declared that the whole lane will be unusable. Okay, so basically this is actually for Wi-Fi 6. But with Wi-Fi 7, okay, you can actually block off the pothole. Okay, we can actually drive around it and basically it will be still able to utilize the rest of the lane. Okay, so which means that for Wi-Fi 6, okay, let's say if there is any interference, basically you can see from here the whole channel will not be able to use. But for Wi-Fi 7, okay, basically you can see that with multiple RU, okay, we still able to transmit. So basically, this example give you in terms of driving. So basically, if let's say there's a hole on one of the lane, okay, for Wi-Fi 6, basically the whole lane will not be able to use. But for Wi-Fi 7, definitely, okay, we know that there will be a hole at that particular lane. Okay, basically at that particular session, then the vehicle will drive around it. Okay, but the whole lane will be still able to use. So basically, this is reason number five with multiple RU punching that meet this Wi-Fi 7 has a better throughput or high data rate. Last but not least, let's move on into the multiple AP operation. Okay, Wi-Fi 7 discuss feature aimed at enhancing the operation efficiency of a junk access point. Okay, this enables the more efficient utilize of spectrum resource and enhance throughput. So in short, nowadays, okay, you probably have this mesh Wi-Fi. Okay, nowadays, we have this mesh Wi-Fi. Okay, so basically, it's so-called is a sharing AP. You just imagine that. Okay, so for example, this is basically a coordinate transmission. Okay, basically, coordinate transmission allows for the sharing of spectrum resource in either the time or frequency domain between a primary access point and one or more secondary APs. So in short, over here, for example, okay, this so-called router is sub phone number one and phone number two. And basically another so-called router will be serving the user number three and user number four. Basically over here, if you take a close look on this diagram here, okay, basically you can see that okay, user one okay, or maybe phone number one has more data rate to transmit. And basically they occupy a huge part okay, of the spectrum versus the time. And you can see that user two is here. Okay, so since user 3 and user 4, they are lighter user, or maybe user 4 is in fact one of the lighter user, so therefore you can see that they actually give up the frequency and also the time to user 2. So basically with this, this is what we call a coordinate transmission. Okay, next will be the coordinate beamforming. Okay, so over here you can see that basically I can actually stir the beam okay, to serve a particular user and over here you can see that this router actually stir the bin okay basically oh sorry this is a now bin basically this will be serving this mobile phone okay this this router actually will be serving this mobile phone so in short basically they stir the bin forming okay to serve a particular user okay this make it very effective just imagine that you have a delicate resource okay to stir the bin okay to serve this particular user Okay, it might also be worthwhile to coordinate beam forming between adjacent APs. Okay, so basically these are so-called the mesh AP. Okay, so basically this can be achieved by forming okay, the radiation now. Okay, which means that this is no transmission. This is no transmission. Okay, to non-associate STA in the neighborhood. Okay, doing so allows simultaneous transmission at the same frequency resource. Okay, so basically over here you can imagine that basically this actually use the same frequency resource, send all this at the same frequency to the user. Okay, so this makes this very effective. As for another one, basically they will be using the same frequency and send this to this particular user. Okay, this basically makes this very effective. Okay, so this one is called the coordinate beam forming, which means that we stir the beam okay, to serve the particular user. Okay, last but not least is on the joint transmission. Okay, I guess you understand why it's called joint transmission. Okay, for example, there is only one user. Two AP actually serve this so-called user simultaneously together. 
Okay, so the most complex feature under discussion is likely the joint transmission. Okay, where in multiple access point transmission or receiving from one or multiple station using the same frequency in a distributed multiple input, multiple output scheme. So in short, basically over here, okay, how can Wi-Fi 7 improve the throughput? Okay, as when, for example, for this case here, you can see that user 2 or maybe user 1 has lots of data. So basically this AP actually will so-called dedicate more resource in terms of bandwidth to serve the user 1. As for user 4, it's actually a light user. So therefore you can see that they can actually coordinate together okay, to serve this four phone. And you can see that basically this AP okay, will also serve the second user. So with this, you actually can actually improve the data rate by cooperatively coordinate the transmission. Okay, next will be the coordinate beam forming. Okay, so basically, as I mentioned earlier on, you have a delicate beam with the same frequency serving you. And basically with this, you can imagine the throughput will be able to so-called improve. Okay, as you can see from here, you can see that different frequency is going to serve different user. But for this, because you can actually do a beam forming, you can delicate, stir this beam to serve this particular user. Okay, so basically all the frequency will be utilized by this user. So from here, you can see that how does the throughput actually improve? Last but not least, on this joint transmission, you can see that both AP actually serve just one client. Okay, imagine these two actually transmit all the data to the client. Then again, you can imagine how Wi-Fi 7 throughput actually improve. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Okay, so over here, okay, I have explained the key feature of Wi-Fi 7 in order to improve the throughput. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.